In these problems, we are using the sum and difference identities. And here they are in this gray box here. You can see the sum of some quantity. If you take the sine of that, it equals the sine of the first thing times the cosine of the second thing plus the cosine of the first thing times the sine of the second thing. And there are formulas for the differences like that on, for sine and cosine and also for tangent. So these look a little bit complicated, but really this isn't much more than plugging and crunching out a bunch of multiplication and some addition and subtraction. The real trick is figuring out what is the sum or the difference in the first place. So in this problem, we're being asked to find the exact value of the cosine of pi over 12. And if we just look at our, our unit circle, the, the one we're familiar with, there is no pi over 12 on here. It's, I guess it'd be halfway between 0 and pi over 6, but that doesn't tell us what these exact values would be. So what we want to do is create some sort of sum or difference where the result is pi over 12 by using these values we already have. And since we've got twelfths here, I think I'm just going to make some notes. You know, pi over 6 is 2 pi over 12, so this is 2 twelfths uh, of, of pi. Um, pi over 4 would be 3 twelfths. Pi over 3 would be 4 twelfths. And since we're going for pi over 12, we're going to have to do a subtraction. And I can see already, oh, well, pi over pi over 3 minus pi over 4, that would just leave 1 twelfth. So if I said the cosine of pi over 3 minus pi over 4, that's going to be the cosine of pi over 12, because 1 third is 4 twelfths, and 1 fourth is 3 twelfths. So that's just going to give me 1 twelfth, which is what I want. I want pi over 12. All right, so we've got our difference. So we're going to use the, the difference identity here, cosine of a minus b. So a is pi over 3, and b is pi over 4. And we just you know, fill this, this form out. So the first we've got is the cosine of a. So this is going to be the cosine of pi over 3. And we've got the cosine of b, so that's times the cosine of pi over 4. And we're adding here. Uh, and then we have the sine of a and the sine of b, so sine of pi over 3 and the sine of pi over 4. And now we can just pull these values from our unit circle and, and multiply and add. So cosine of pi over 3. That's the x value. That's 1 half. The cosine of pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2. And we're going to add that to the sine of pi over 3. That's the y value. So that's square root of 3 over 2. And the sine, oops, this should read pi over 4. And the sine of pi over 4. So that's square root of 2 over 2. And let's see what kind of simplifying we can do. Um, here, when we do the multiplication, we get the square root of 2 over 4. And here, square root of 3 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 6 over 4. So I guess I could write this as the square root of 2 plus the square root of 6 all over 4. And I think that's as simple as I need to for this exact value. So let's try one more of these just to practice. Here I've got 11 pi over 12. So I'm using twelfths again, and I want something that's going to add up to 11. Let's see. Um, pi over 4 is the same as 3 pi over 12. And let's see. So 2 pi over 3. Aha, that would be 8 pi over 12. So if I add 8 and 3, I get 11 pi over 12. So that's going to be my sum. So this is going to be the sine of 8 pi over 12. Well, we should write that as 2 pi over 3, though. So we can pull the, the right values. 2 pi over 3 plus uh, pi over 4. OK, so let's look at the identity for the sum of a sine. That's this one here. So we need the sine of a. So that's the sine of 2 pi over 3 times the cosine of b, so cosine of pi over 4, and plus the 
cosine of a, so cosine 2 pi over 3, and sine of b, so sine pi over 4. Now we can fill in the values here. So the sine of 2 pi over 3, the sine is the y value, that's square root of 3 over 2. And the cosine of pi over 4 is the square root of 2 over 2. And we have plus. And now we want the cosine of 2 pi over 3. Cosine of 2 pi over 3 is negative 1 half. It's the x value. And then the sine of pi over 4 is going to be square root of 2 over 2. I don't know why I wrote a 6 down here. That's a, a 2. All right, let's go ahead and do the multiplication. So square root of 3 times square root of 2 is the square root of 6. That's over 4. And then we're going to have plus a negative value. So this is going to be minus. And we've got square root of 2 over 4. So this is the square root of 6 minus the square root of 2 all over 4. So that is a little bit of work using the sum and difference formulas.